Okay guys, so this is going to be our puppy test. First puppy walks into the room. The first test is going over a threshold into a new room that the dog has never been in before. As you can see, that puppy aced it. He walked right in, no problem. Uh, now we've moved him to a different part of the room. The behavior is still open, you know, he's taking it all in, but he's, he's not shutting down. Um, we're going to offer him food. These dogs have never even eaten from a hand before. We've only been feeding them from the bowl, so I want to see you know, if the puppy has the food drive to eat from the hand in a new environment that he's never been in before. A lot of puppies, if they don't have much food drive, you're gonna see the second you change up the environment, even if they're hungry, they'll be completely subsumed by being in that new place and that'll be all they can think of. They won't have the interest in eating. So you can see this little guy, you know, once he figured out that there's food in the trainer's hand, um, you know, he's following the trainer, his, his behavior is open, uh, you know, he's exploring, he's not crawling on his belly or hesitating the way that you'll see a dog that has environmental issues. Environmentals is really big, you know. A lot of dogs have environmental issues, um, and you see it right from six weeks on. So these, these this litter of puppies is six weeks when we're doing this test. Um, so yeah, you know, you can see that this is, he has the drive to eat, he's open, he's, he's exploring. I just threw a jug, and he had no problem with the jug. This jug is full of uh, rocks, so it makes quite a loud rattling noise. I'm picking it up, and I'm throwing it on the ground. Dog has very little interest one way or the other in the jug. As you can see, he runs actually right by it there, which is good. A lot of dogs dogs will avoid it. I kicked it there, and I'm just kind of messing with it. I keep kicking it. Every time I kick it, it's a huge, loud, rattling noise. So, you know, he's he, he could really care less. Now we're going to do the prey drive test, just an old burlap piece of burlap, see if he wants to chase it. Again, a lot of dogs, even if they have some prey drive, you put them in a new place, they won't want to do it. As you can see with him here, he has no issues engaging in, in, in biting. He has a nice, nice grip. He's already showing a very full grip, a very, uh, I would say, dominant grip. Like, this is the kind of behavior that I want to see in a dog biting. Like, he's not shifting around. He's not too hectic. He's just full. He's holding on. Um, you know, I think, you know, some, some people may disagree with me, but I think this puppy's actually going to be quite the powerful, um, uh, biter when he's older. I think the grips on this dog are going to be phenomenal. Uh, these are six week old puppies again, so I'm real happy to see this at six week. A lot of dogs won't really show you much, if anything, at six week. There you go. You see he comes off when I lift him off the ground. He didn't like that that much, so he opened his mouth. So I'm going to re-engage him here and see if he's willing to do it again. You know, it's it's really important to kind of see like where the dog's thresholds are, what he's willing to do. So I made him miss a whole bunch of times. Now a dog that doesn't have a lot of prey drive or who's more preoccupied with the environment is going to be super interested in, you know, it's going to be really easy to distract him from that rag. But as you can see, this guy re-engages that rag. Uh, even though he misses it a bunch of times, he stays on, he stays committed to getting it. You know, so right there, you know, I just did a little bit lifting him up, but not too much. And I'm seeing the right behavior, you know, again, not hectic. He's just full, hard grips, um, you know, as, as much as a six-week-old puppy can do. Um, and uh, this is what I want to see. So the prey drive, you know, I've definitely seen more prey drive, but the way that he bites, I really like. So we'll see how this dog grows up, but I, I, I'm very happy with, with the grips that this pup has. So... This is pup number one and, you know, just seeing really how much he's willing to do, if he's willing to push into the rag and you see he regrips on the rag and there you go. Nice, nice behavior. Now I'm going to pull my whip. This whip, the, the volume's kind of turned down on the video, but this whip makes a huge cracking noise. So listen carefully, you'll hear it. And you don't even really see a change in the dog's behavior. I start cracking that whip right next to him, right there. Like, it sounds like a gunshot if you're there, you know, because it's an echoey room. So, this is this is really good. Like, this dog, look at that. Like, no noise sensitivity whatsoever. That's exactly what I want to see. Social behavior with other dogs, it does matter. I want to see it. I don't, I just want to see that the dog, you know, I want to see how confident he is. And, like, look at him. He's getting a beating from this other puppy, and, and he's just... He's just back for more, back for more. And and look at his, again, social open. He's ready. He's going at it. 
you know, a little bit of rough handling here with him. I want to see how he takes to that. Does he want to run away after I'm a little rough with him? After I grab him, I pinch him a little bit. I yell, I hold him upside down. But as you can see, you know, he, he, this dog is is really like just not much bothers him, and and that's what I want to see. Look at that behavior. Very Puppy nice. number two walks in. Good social behavior. Okay, go over there, make I like I like how he walked into the room. Um, and let's see what we do here. So we're offering food. Yeah, so he's a little bit hesitant about the trainer, um, so it's a bit of a different behavior there. He's smelling the food. Uh, I know it looks like it. he's eating, but he really actually isn't eating here. So, you know, he's, he's, he's still like the environmentals on this dog are pretty good in that he walked into that room and he's willing to move. He's, again, not hugging the ground. His tail's, his tail's wagging. You know, he's still fairly open. He's a little bit more watchful of the environment but you know everything is looking the way that it should look but again you're seeing this dog is more interested in the environment than he is in food now things can change of course um you know nothing is written in stone but i really think that you see a lot of what the dog is as a puppy so here he sees the other dog Oh, yep. look at that, Very right? Picture, eh? Very intimidated yeah. by that other dog. Um, oh, there you go. And you can All see right. it's very, he has a, quite a strong reaction to that other dog, you know, offering him that play behavior. And that, you know, tells you a little bit about the level of confidence, the social confidence that he has, right? There's environmental confidence, the confidence about going over and into new things. And then there's social confidence, social yeah, confidence with people and social confidence with other dogs. So again, we're offering him food. We're giving him a chance, you know, and, and like he kind of munched a kibble there, but there's really no commitment from him for the food the way that you saw with the previous puppy. There's food on the ground. Hmm, not much there. Oh, so I throw the jug there, and you can see he's, he's real worried about the jug. There you go. I'm going to kick, I think, the jug here. and or No, I'm going to throw it. Yeah, you can see he's real concerned about it. Um, you know, again, it's not a horrific reaction. Like, I've seen puppies way worse than this. Again, he doesn't like that jug. And, um, you know, this is... Uh, this is... Uh, but he bounces back. That's the other thing. So here's the prey drive test. So you're seeing some small interest, but not that much. So he has some interest in it, but it's not like a overwhelming interest definitely not to the point where he's gonna bite as you can see the environment is way more interesting for him than the drive that he has to bite that rag so that tells me something about his prey drive so puppy number three wow this is a nice litter walks right into the room environmentally quite nice oh you know avoids the dog a little bit but not too much like still a nice open behavior willing to run back into the room let's see if he wants to eat hmm oh so there you go. See, look, this was better than the last puppy. A little bit worried, but he doesn't, you know, full-on bolt, and, and he's willing to kind of hang in there and, and, and give that social interaction a chance. So that tells you, you know, that, you know, probably, uh, you know, with, with a little bit of experience for him, this will be easy. So you can see, again, like the hesitation. It's a little bit of a different picture. It's somewhere between puppy number one and puppy number two, right? So now we take him away from that dog. We put him down here, and right. we're going to give him another chance to eat because it was really distracting there. So we want to see if he has that crazy food drive, right? And by the way, when I say food drive, okay, I'm talking like working dog level. So he eats, right, a little bit. But again, you can see he actually has more interest in the trainer than he does in the food. So this is a dog that will probably be very handler-focused, um, you know, that that will really want that reassurance and, and that relationship with the handler and the handler will make the dog stronger so here you see he sees the bucket and he's like oh what's that but he's willing to investigate you know he overcomes his his slight insecurity about it the noise doesn't bother him that much he's showing a good behavior yeah this is good so you can see like he bounces back from that slight that the noise of that jug the rattle jug barely bothers him now we do the prey drive test and, you know, again, he'd rather interact with the trainer than he would with the rag. It doesn't mean, by the way, that this dog has um, no prey drive. It just means that right now that drive isn't that high. Um, and it can become higher later on. But as you can see, you know. So this is uh, puppy number four. 
So again, the door is kind of closing here, so we open it. He walks in. Again, the behavior doesn't change. It's really important to watch a dog cross a threshold. It tells you a lot about how a dog crosses a threshold, right? If the dog kind of hesitates at the threshold, you'll see. It's, it's, it's definitely a warning sign. So here he sees that dog. Whoa! right but right back in there he bounces right back showing a very good behavior he's almost as good as puppy number one here he's getting kind of beat up a little bit again but he doesn't care he's, he's willing to get down and dirty and that's what i'm looking for i want to see a dog that can handle social stress that can handle environmental stress and bounce back real fast and and stay functional that's really important for a working dog so let's see oh yeah so this dog is eating this dog is committed to the food this dog is showing the same kind of food drive that we saw in puppy number one he's even eating it off the floor maybe even a little bit better than puppy number one in the food drive department so and let's see if he goes to the train or there oh, what's he doing here okay yeah we just called him back a lot of distractions it's a new place there you go buddy all right and we throw the jug look at that perfect like he saw it coming the whole time it didn't bother him this is a very nice behavior on the jug as you can see uh you know just about as good as puppy number one was in terms of um you know the startle and everything else so we'll do the prey drive test so definitely some interest right away you can see it but at the end of the day, mm, mm, more interest than the of the last two puppies, but definitely not on the level of puppy number one. But there's definitely enough interest there that I would say, of course, based on me knowing the parents of this dog, I think all four dogs are going to have prey drive, don't get me wrong, but this one um, I think will be a little bit behind number one but he will definitely have very good drive as well it's important to remember too you know like these tests definitely give us a lot of information about wh what is raw in the dog what genetics um, express themselves strongly in the dog but there's definitely stuff that can kick in later on in life so here i'm cracking a whip with this dog bang no in no fear whatsoever there he hesitates a little bit i caught it right behind him he's like what the hell is that but he comes back you see how he opens up again so this is what i want to see very interested very curious it's important to understand guys that while the test i think really does provide a lot of very good information it definitely isn't foolproof 100 percent. so the dog in this video for instance i sold as a puppy she did average on the test she was kind of middle of the road in that litter and here she is just at eight months and you see the kind of dog that she became she ended up being one of the best in that litter and um, you know i didn't think that she would be um that being said that those tests have worked pretty well for me when it comes to selecting you know dogs that are that that are good for work um but as i said you know when it comes to active family um, companions i'm just looking for confident social dogs and i saw that in pretty much all the puppies they, they showed good potential for that um I, i'd say two of those puppies showed really good potential for work but it's not you know impossible that you know the two that i don't think uh, showed as well for work won't end up actually becoming good working dogs so you know nothing is for sure but we stack the deck in our favor with these tests man this puppy was nice